In Jesus' precious name. Peace. Isaiah chapter 53. Verse 1. Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He has no form nor comeliness. When we shall see him there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows. And acquainted with grief. And we heed as it were. Our faces from him. He was despised. And we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows yet we did esteem him stricken smitten of God and afflicted but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed all we like sheep, we have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. The Lord bless his word. In Jesus' precious name. It is the celebration of the crucifixion and resurrection. That's our subject. The celebration of the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is what Easter is all about. It is the celebration of the crucifixion and the resurrection. Of Jesus Christ. Our main objective this morning. Is to understand what we celebrate at Easter. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Sorry chapter 15. And in verse 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And if Christ be not risen. Then is our preaching vain. And then your faith is also vain. Verse 17. If Christ is not risen, then is our preaching vain. And your faith is also vain. Verse 17. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sin. What is the meaning of that by way of introduction? Number one, the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ is the bedrock of Christianity. Our faith is vain. Our preaching is useless if Christ be not raised. The, the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead is the bedrock of Christianity. Number two, the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead is the demarcation of Christianity from the religions of the world. It is the demarcation of Christianity from the religions of the world. That is the reason why Christianity is not just an ordinary religion. The crucifixion and then the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Finally, the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ is the basis 
of the liveliness, vitality, dynamism of Christianity is the basis for the liveliness, vitality, and dynamism of Christianity. The resurrection, the crucifixion, and then the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 6 verse 4. He said, like as Christ, therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. I may be wrong, but I don't know of any religion of the earth that is as, as vibrant as dynamic, as exuberant, effervescent, buoyant as Christianity. You have some of the Eastern religions, the and with all their uh, um, um, melancholy and depressiveness and 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 very very terrible demeaning doctrines of uh, if you are living a bad life, that is your fate. Maybe you will reincarnate into a better life tomorrow and so on. We have all such religions. You don't know what is called praise and worship until you step into church. Where somebody may not have money in his account but he's jumping and dancing. Where somebody may not know how he will get back home from the church in the morning but he's jumping and dancing. And he is not pretending. He just cannot help it. The liveliness, the vitality, the dynamism of Christianity is in the life of the vibrant Savior. Is God speaking to someone here? That is why the other religions are majorly dead religions. Very, very dead. Lift your right hand and say, thank you for Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your death on Calvary. Thank you for your sacrifice. We give you the praise, Lord, in Jesus' name. Ooh. I love that man of Galilee. He has done so very, very much for me. He has forgiven me all my sins. He placed the Holy Ghost in me. I love that man of Galilee. What do we celebrate? What did the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ offer us. Which is basically what we celebrate. What did it offer us? Number one, rescue from eternal damnation. He came to die so we can escape hell. John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish in hell but have everlasting life. Romans chapter 6 verse 23 The wages of sin is death but the gift of God through Jesus Christ is eternal life. The escape of damnation. You have the guarantee that you can miss hell and step into heaven because Jesus came. Isn't that wonderful? Number two reconciliation with the father man was hopelessly lost reconciliation with the father in second corinthians chapter 5 verse 18 and 19 second corinthians chapter 5 and all things are of god 
who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To it that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Reconciliation with the Father. There are people who said, since I found Jesus Christ, my life has changed. That is not a very true statement. You didn't find him because he wasn't missing. He found you. You were hopelessly lost. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? And he, he found you and you responded to his search. Look at your neighbor say, he found me. He found me. Take your seat. Reconciliate. See, the religions of the world, the religions of the world is man looking for God. They tell them, if you do like this, you can find God. If you do like this, you can find God. There are religions in the, in the East where people have to flog themselves they call it flagellation. They lacerate their own bodies. They suffer themselves until maybe they believe that they have suffered enough, then God will accept them. In other religions, people look for God. In Christianity, God looks for people. Is God speaking to somebody here? You remember the story, please take your seat, of the small boy that lost his way. I enjoy telling that story all the time. He missed his road and the police found him in town. Little boy, what's happening? He was crying. You see, I missed my way. What is the name of your father? Daddy. What is the name of your mother? Mommy. Where is your house? I don't know. Then they asked the boy, is there anything around your house? That can be used that you remember. You see, I now remember there is a big church near my house. That big church has a big white cross on top of it. Take me to that cross, I will find my way home. to that cross I will find my way home my brothers and my sisters if you can find your way to the cross you can find your way to your destiny if you can find your way to the cross you can find your way to your destiny tell somebody near you tell them take me to that cross and I'll find my way it. The cross is our pathfinder. The cross is our GPS. Doesn't make us miss road. Reconciliation with the father. That was number two. Because humanity, God, man sinned and God drove them from the garden of Eden. And then God sent his son to bring man back to him. Number three. Restoration of access to God's presence. Restoration of access. That was what Calvary came to do for us. You remember? When man sinned, God drove them out of the Garden of Eden. In Genesis chapter 3 verse 21. And he placed a big sword. Verse 22. And the Lord, now 20, 23. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. He drove man out of the garden, out of his presence. Since then, man has been looking for God. Some look for him in Indian hemp, like the man. Others in homosexuality, all manner, occultism. 
esoteric things, all manner of mind issues. They look for God, some in intelligence, and they never found God until God sent his son, Jesus Christ. Look at what Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 said. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 6. He said, let us come therefore boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 19. Hebrews 10 19. Having therefore brethren boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus by a new and living way which he has consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh look at that is by the blood of Jesus we have access to God's presence I can feel God anywhere anywhere inside the car inside the bathroom in the aircraft anywhere but look at what happened when Jesus gave up the ghost in the book of Matthew chapter 27 and in verse 50. Matthew 27 verse 50. 50. And the Bible said, Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, he yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in two from the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake and the rocks rent. That veil that separated the, the Holy of Holies from the holy place, from the, the, the inner court, from the we have the outer court, the inner court, and then the holy of holies. The one that divided priests entered in once every year to make atonement for people. When Jesus gave up the ghost, that veil was torn. Theologians tell us that the veil is about 18 meters high. That is like the height of this wall right there this uh, this cutting the way this cutting is now that is how this is about 18 18 meters high and this is how that veil was and it was not turned from down up it was turned from up down which means that a human hand did not tear it god must have sent an angel and said tear that veil so that anybody can enter my presence My son has given his life. He has shed his blood for, for, the, for humanity. The way is open so that anybody at any time can lift up his voice and will hear him. Will you lift your hands and say, thank you, Jesus? Say it louder. Say, thank you, Jesus. Say it loud. No, say, thank you, Jesus. Woo! Give him the praise as you take your seat. And so, we had rescue from eternal damnation, reconciliation with the Father, restoration of access to God's presence. Number four is renovation of character. Renovation. Jesus Christ died that our character can be renewed. Call it victory and triumph over sin. Victory and triumph over sin. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, he said, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. In verse 21, he said, Matthew, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, For he has made him to be seen for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made. The righteousness of God is character renovation. That is why you see a terrible drunkard give his life to Christ. Hi. And at the smell of alcohol, he feels like vomiting. And he doesn't touch that liquid hell for life. That, that is why you see a hardened criminal murderer give his life to Christ. And suddenly he cannot hurt a fly. Is more tender than a child. You see people living as prostitutes. I have heard this. Who gave their life to Christ? And when they got married, they testified that the first time they had relationship with their husband 
appeared like the very first time in life. As if the memory of the past deleted. And because he lives, I can face my road. Because he lives, I'll fear a new person I believe there are people here with a yoke and a bondage of sin on your life that is about to be broken right now they believe that shout the loudest amen it is rescue from eternal damnation restoration of access to God's presence number three okay now all right, reconciliation with the Father. Then number three, restoration of access to God's presence. Then number four, renovation of character. It's what Christ came for. Number five, the relegation of sorrow and depression. The relegation of sorrow this is emotional or psychological healing. Isaiah 53 verse 3 to 4. He said, he said he is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs. Anything grieving you, he carried it. He has carried our sorrows, our depression. Yet we did esteem stricken, smitten of God. And afflicted. What is the meaning of that? The same way Jesus carried your sin, and like I am going to come to, he carried your sickness in that same way. He carried your negative emotions, your melancholy, your heaviness, your depression, the things that are meant to weigh you down. There are times people get weighed down even for no reason. You are just sitting and a spirit of depression just comes around you. And you begin to feel what is life all about. Why am I living? What have I achieved with my life? And all those kind of thoughts. At that time, you rebuke that devil of depression. Say, okay, Jesus dealt with you on Calvary. I am not going to carry what Jesus already carried. My life is worth living. I, 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 I am not where I may want to be yet, but I am not where I used to be. Somebody shout, power! By the power of the cross of Calvary, you can rebuke depression. The same way you rebuke oppression. You dreamt in the night and somebody was pressing you down. You woke up in the morning, you dealt with it in the same manner. You are just sitting on your own all of a sudden. A climate of gloominess tried to wrap himself around you. Tell him, Satan, I recognize you. I have no reason to be down. Jesus took my sorrow. He took my burdens. He took my pains. And he has a plan for me. He says to me, I know the plans I have towards you. Plans of good and not of evil. To give you an expected end. I am not yet in my future. So everything is still in order. Shout yes! yes. Someone say amen. That's how I, I decide to live my life. I saturate my environment with worship permanently. My wife said, when will you stop? She said, she said, the only time I stop either humming or singing or worshiping or listening to something is when I am asleep. <laughs> and how you know you're awake is that it starts. 
If he starts, she knows I'm awake. <laughs> hey! I am anointed here this morning to arrest the garment of depression. The spirit of gloominess. Every devil that is trying to make you depressed. Today is the end of your assignment. Somebody shout power. Look at somebody by your side. Say because of Christ. Your life is worth living. 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 Take your seat. The relegation of soul. Don't forget it. Every time you remember Jesus and what he did for you. Remember that he rescued you from death in hell. He reconciled you with his father. He restored access to his father's presence. Gave you renovation of character of victory and triumph over sin. Relegated sorrow and depression. Number six, rescue from infirmities and diseases. Rescue from infirmities and diseases. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5 but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed that is they beat him to free you first peter 2:24 this one was saying it in expectation Peter began to speak it in retrospection. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were, were, were healed. If you were healed, it means you is healed. <laughs> is his present if you were by whose stripes 2,000 years ago on Calvary you were healed so now you is healed hey! children don't write it in white <laughs> because I'm aware students are here you are healed Hallelujah. Take your seat. That is why, sit down. Any disease that followed you from your father, your mother, inherited infirmities, by the power of the cross today, it is arrested. Everything in your body right now that is not planted by my father in heaven, by the power of the cross of Calvary, they are arrested. Somebody shout, I am healed. By his tribes, I am healed. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Is the release, the rescue from infirmities and diseases. Number seven, rescue from curses and bondage. What did Christ do for us on the cross of Calvary? He took our curses. He took our bondage. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 and 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Be made a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone that hangeth on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. First Peter chapter 1 verse 18. He said, you know, for as much as you know, that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from vain conversation received by tradition from your father. That is the thing that negative things your fathers gave you, you were, you were redeemed with the precious blood of Jesus from those things. This is the meaning of it. If everybody in your village don't amount to anything no matter how hard they try, because that is a family generational curse. It is minus you. 
by the cross of Calvary. If your father reached a certain level and he died before his time, and the devil says, you are the next person to die before your time, you tell the devil, minus me. If marriage is done to work in your family, and they say your own two will not work, tell them by the cross of Calvary, it is minus. Help me tell three people it is minus you. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Is God speaking to anybody here? Many of us, the only thing we receive from Calvary is the forgiveness of sins. It's more than that. It is came from hell to go to heaven. It's more than that. You can't die the way your father died. You can't die of the same sickness that killed your mother. Somebody shout power! You can't be limited by what limited your people. Otherwise, there was no use for church. He loves me. I cannot say why. He loves me. I cannot say why. On Calvary's tree, He suffered for me. He loves me. I cannot. Say why? Sing it again. He lost me. I cannot say why. He lost me. I cannot say why. On Calvary's tree, he suffered. For me, he loves me. I cannot say why. The love is too much. You are not meant to be carrying the things you have been carrying. Christ already carried it for you. It is rescue. 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 Rescue from curses. Number eight is the release of peace. And deliverance from crisis. The release of peace. And deliverance from crisis. The release of peace. And deliverance from crisis. In Isaiah chapter 53. And in verse 5. Isaiah 53 and in verse 5. He said but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace. Was upon him. And Hear me. Anyone here with that has been marked to die before time, today that mark is deleted. Everywhere they are planning your premature death. Those who are planning it will take your place in that death. There is something about that Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Kings and kingdoms will all fade away. There is something about that name. Kings and kingdoms. Kings 
will fade. Important and influential people will fade. Oh, there is something about her name. Rescue from premature death. Now, how do you access the benefits of Calvary? All these ten things I mentioned. How does it become your own? Number one, be born again. Be born again. There are things that accompany salvation. According to Hebrews chapter 6 and in verse 9. He said, but beloved, we are persuaded better things of you. And things that accompany salvation. When you become saved, there are things that come with your salvation. These are those things. Until you are a child in the house, you don't have access. You don't have unrestricted access. Access, you don't. A visitor is confined to the parlor, the living room. A son enters the bedroom. Fat enters the toilet. Why? By virtue of relationship, he has access to several things. That is how it is in the kingdom. When you are a stranger to the kingdom of God, there is a limit to which God can go with you. But when you are confirmed as a son, a child in the house, no limits be born again. Number two, be lighted with insight. The things you just heard now don't become yours by accident. They become yours by understanding it. Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 29. He said, the secret things belong unto the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever. That we may do all the words of this law. The things that are revealed, they belong to us. Let this be clear to you. That Jesus died. Listen to this message. And similar messages until this mentality become fully rooted in you. Be born again. Be lighted with insight. And finally, walk in faith. It is unto everybody according to their faith. Walk in faith. Walk in faith. Walk in faith. Matthew chapter 9 verse 27. To 28. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him crying, saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. When he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto him, Yellow. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. It is always according to everybody's faith. What is your faith? My faith is Jesus died young so I can live long. The devil that can take me out before my time has not been created. What is your faith? Jesus carried the curses of my lineage. Whatever followed my fathers and my family members, no matter how desperate they are, they can't follow me. You walk in your faith. And your faith shall make you complete. Somebody say amen. Somebody receive something today, say amen. amen. And I announce to someone here, the full bundle of Calvary's package is landing on your head today, landing on your life today, landing on your destiny today. Shout the loudest, amen.